everyone, what's up? This is Simon from DevTactic with a slightly different tutorial or video than we usually have on this channel. So today I want to talk about how I've built a MVP version of a pretty idea that I had a few weeks ago in nothing more than 24 hours. And the great thing about this is if you know a bit about Ionic or Angular, and general web technologies, you can do the same. Um, you can do it a lot faster. I did this on a vacation. I actually slept in the 24 hours and we were out. So perhaps um, it's more like five to eight hours of total work for this basic world. Therefore, let's talk about eight steps of the process. Step number one, the idea. The idea is basically uh, what somehow comes to you in a crazy moment and for me the idea was uh, something that already exists in a different category which is a snippet library for other libraries um, like WordPress or other frameworks um, exactly the same for Ionic so submit snippets search for snippets show the snippets and find um, your code a lot faster so that was the idea if you don't have an idea perhaps try to look at stuff that's already out there and just do it a little bit better, do it different. Um, there are multiple ways to find new ideas. Um, I think it's not that easy, but it's definitely something you can achieve and sometimes the idea just strikes you out of the nothing. Then the second part is the framework selection. And this part was pretty easy for me because I have a strong background in Ionic, which means I also know about Angular, which means I can build websites. Okay, that's done. But I also needed a backend and there's the selection between doing it on your own with something like Node.js or picking um, a hosting with Firebase where you don't really need any backend coding skills. I decided to use Node.js with a MongoDB just because I enjoy working with Node.js, creating a REST API, and I'm pretty fast with it by now. So therefore, everything of this project is with JavaScript, backend is Node.js plus MongoDB, and frontend would be Angular um, just for the web. Step number three. This was um, actually something I always do in my projects, and that's um, seeing if I can actually solve the most critical problem of the project. In this case, uh, it meant showing, uploading the snippets. And I decided to go with StackBlitz. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's like CodePen or um, I don't know the names of all the platforms out there where you can basically create a project and share the URL with other friends and developers so they can see what you did with a live preview. And this is especially interesting for Ionic because you need many files for a snippet, not just one file. And therefore, I wanted to integrate the StackBlitz SDK. And therefore, my critical test was to see if the StackBlitz SDK would work. And the good thing was it worked out pretty well. So I could integrate the StackBlitz examples into my own application and showing the preview of a snippet. So this step passed also. Step number four was to see if somebody would actually be interested in the project. And therefore I asked the holy Twitter community and the result was based on a little uh, image I made. So I asked if this would be interesting and actually 70 people said like and 12 retweeted the idea. So that was the whole verification for me and this fueled uh, my ambition to develop the most basic version of this app as fast as I can and get it out so people could actually use it and play around with it so I can get feedback. Step number five was developing the application and five and six are more or less combined. So five is developing the application and six is developing the server. For the application, as I said, I picked Angular and What's interesting about this, if you come from Ionic or if you subscribe to my channel because you love Ionic videos, is um, that Angular uses a bit different routing concept. So what you do is basically you set up a roots array with information about different paths and the component assigned to that path. So um, we will see this behavior with Ionic version 4 pretty soon as well. Ionic and Angular will be closely uh, chained together or um, not chained together, actually they're more separate than ever, but Ionic is more or less 
um, easily integratable into an Angular project. And therefore we will see this routing logic with Ionic pretty soon as well. So it was a great way to get used to this and it works pretty good. Um, you define those routes and you uh, use them. You can even um, have, let's see if I can go somewhere. Um, no, right here. Um, simply links to the URLs and the routing logic will resolve everything for you. Um, and that was actually the most interesting part. Besides that, I used Bootstrap in the project to make it look uh, like most of the nice websites you know already. And otherwise, it's basically Angular and you know it from Ionic. If you have used Ionic, the providers, the pages, um, sorry about that. It's always the same, just with a bit different markup. We don't have the Ionic elements in here, but we simply used the bootstrap elements and the result was looking pretty good and I'll show you at the end. For step number six, which is the server, uh, as I said, I used Node.js and actually this is my whole project um, used for this. I only need a little model for my snippet. I um, created what I think what I need. I have a few routes defined to get snippets, to upload a new snippet or to get one snippet by its ID and everything else will be stored inside the MongoDB. So this is really basic stuff everyone can learn in like 10, 20, 30 minutes and just create a server API which can work nicely with your front-end application. Step number seven is hosting your application. So you don't want to have it just on your local host, you want to get it out to the world. And my recommendation is pretty straightforward, easy and in the beginning totally free. So for your Angular application you just need some hosting. And in my case I just created a Firebase project, I turned on the hosting and I uploaded my Angular project to Firebase hosting and the result is a URL like this. And that's fine for an MVP, but I also already had bought the domain name ionicsnippets.com. So I wanted to um, activate this domain for the Firebase hosting. And guess what? It's super easy. You just have to add one TXT file to your DNS records uh, where you purchase the domain, connect it with Firebase. All the steps are described and in no time you have your own domain connected um, with the Firebase hosting. Of course the domain was paid so this part is not free anymore then. This is actually the application. Also for the step number seven you need a place to deploy your backend and in my case I picked Heroku. Um, you might have seen it in other videos. I really enjoy using Heroku for my APIs. Um, they have a CLI integration as well so if you have integrated everything you can push updates just by saying uh, git push to a specific origin and then Heroku will rebuild your application. It will be available under a domain. I could also add a domain here, but that's actually not so public and therefore I don't need a real domain name in here. What I can do as well with Heroku is plug in MongoDB using MongoLab. Um, the sandbox mode again is free, just like the free dinos with Heroku. So again, this part can be done in a few minutes and is totally free as well. The result is what I already showed you, this little platform. Um, of course, it's not looking good, but if you're not ashamed of your MVP, um, it's not an MVP. So I really wanted to be ashamed. I just had this getting started page, a little about page to who created this project and then um, submit form to submit snippets and once you have submitted the snippets they will be available in this list. Um, you can go into one, you see some information and in the middle the uh, StackBlitz SDK currently loads the snippet. Um, we will see it hopefully right there, the preview and you could also go um, to StackBlitz directly from this snippet to see all the code related to this snippet. Welcome to Ionic Snippets and there it is again. So step number eight, your app is live, what to do now? 
if this would be a commercial project, I would somehow um, do some marketing, promote it, write to people to use it, give feedback. But this was just an idea I wanted to do for the community and therefore uh, I decided to just let it live for now. From time to time I add some snippets. If you're interested in making uh, this platform a bit bigger, uh, you're very welcome to submit new snippets to the library so other developers can search for snippets and then find their code a lot faster. But although I got this amazing first reaction on the idea, actually nobody submitted any snippet by now. So all the snippets you see in the list are from myself and I'm not disappointed because I know um, people can be lazy. Um, it's hard to start something new, especially if it's uh, so small like it is now because those 10 or 13 snippets won't make any difference but perhaps we can grow this over time people might find this and one day they will use it and if the library has like 500 or 1000 snippets it will be a lot more useful then so I'm patient and perhaps we can build this out into something bigger in the future but anyway be prepared that perhaps nobody is using your project don't be sad because along the way, if you follow these eight steps, you will have learned a lot. You will have learned how to build an Angular application, how to build a little server, um, how to overcome all the obstacles on the way, how to host your Angular app, how to host your server, and all the related technologies. So if you go on to your next project, which might be the perfect killer idea, uh, you will be able to execute this idea a lot faster because you've already done all the steps in the first place and now you can basically copy this blueprint for your next application. So if you have any questions about the process, um, the tools and frameworks involved, please just leave a comment below. And otherwise, um, make sure to subscribe to this channel for uh, more Ionic videos, which are the majority on this channel. And of course, if you're interested in this project, make sure to check out ionicsnippets.com. The library is pretty small, but you can help to grow this library today. Um, and perhaps if you've used it, give some feedback uh, by Twitter or email, what you prefer. Uh, I would be really happy if somebody uses the project. If not, I can still live with it because I've learned so many things along the way and that's actually reward enough.